So I, I want to know, sort of stemming off of the per performance you've seen from the line so far this year, is is this the best you've seen them play compared to maybe some of the best you saw the line play last year? You know, obviously I was I was pleased with the effort that uh, the guys uh, came forward with last Saturday. I, I was I was pleased with the way they stayed the course and didn't. Uh, didn't let the circumstances of the second quarter and early in the third get them down. So from that standpoint, you know, yeah, I was pleased. Uh, are we? Are have we arrived? Absolutely not. Uh, we've got a lot more work to do. You know, the one thing about Michigan State, yes, they were a very physical team up front, but from a schematic standpoint, they didn't do a lot of things that really gave us a huge amount of problems. So we're going to face much stiffer cha challenges down the road. So yeah, we've got a lot of work to do. With this line being so interchangeable, uh, losing Tyler, uh, Andre going down in the middle of that Michigan State game, does, does the line being interchangeable uh, make it more advantageous for guys to see different positions, or does that uh, hurt a line? Well, uh, I guess you could argue it either way. I've never, I've never had the luxury of, of being two and three deep at, at one position where, you know, you could plug in a guy and, and never worry about dropping off. So, you know, I'm going to play the best five guys that I can, and and that usually means that that you have to cross train them at different positions. So, um, you know, I've always coached that way and and uh, you know worked my two deep that way so and that's what you saw on Saturday are you pleased with the way they've been moving the way they've been uh, sort of going with the flow and they've needed when these guys have needed to play at different spots on the line yeah I am I mean I, I don't give them a lot of time to think about it you know it, it's just something that 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 they are expected to do and and um, you know, every, every guy is expected to know more than one position out there which which they handle pretty well what's the latest you know about Andre right now uh, you know day to day and uh, we we'll hope to get him back soon Tyrell Crosby, um, he was he was a talk. I've been off the last couple days, but I, I know he's been he's been a talk uh, uh, coming out of that Michigan State game. What do you like about uh, the way he plays, the way he works on the field? Well, obviously, he, the way he's built. I mean, he's he's in my opinion a natural tackle. I mean, he's got the length, uh, he's got the athleticism and the balance of what you want out there on the edge, and so. Now it's just a matter of, of refining his knowledge base and his skill sets. But, you know, he's a cool customer. Uh, nothing really rattles him that much. You know, he may be, at least externally, uh, you know, inside I'm sure he's got some butterflies and some jitters. But uh, on the outside, you know, you can't really tell. And uh, I love the way he carries himself on a football field for a young guy. Does he bring a little extra pop to the line? You know, he does. He has a really good punch. Um, you know, like he's got the length in the arms and he can keep those defensive ends off of his body. Um, so like I said, he's he was he was born born to be an offensive tackle. I want to know, is the is the offensive line the most dangerous place to play given the dog pile, given the risk of, of you know, getting ankles trapped, pinned, knees pinned and twisted? Uh, is it the most dangerous place to play on the field? Uh, that's up to debate. You know, I, I personally think no. You know, if we keep our feet moving and and whatnot, I mean, the injuries that we've that we've suffered, uh, you know, at least the, the the knee problems have really been all kind of non-contact injuries. You know, nothing real severe that you could point your you know finger at and say this is what happened. You know, and why somebody landing on it. They were all kind of non non-contact and more just stress type of type of injuries. But um, you know. If a guy plays with good technique and keeps his feet going, you know, we should limit the number of uh, injuries we have. And we've been very fortunate in the last several years where we haven't had any injuries. And, you know, this year, you know, for whatever reason, you know, we're going to get caught a little bit with the bug, but we can't can't dwell on it. Just got to move forward. Steve, last season, Wyoming's defense really struggled, and they have pretty much the same guys, and they're off to a great start. What have you seen? This coaching changes. A new scheme, yeah. new scheme, probably new energy with the new coaches. Uh, I'm very, very impressed with the way they they get to the ball, they run to the ball. Uh, they're playing a lot of guys up front, um, so they're keeping bodies fresh and getting them going. Um, they do a lot of movement up front, which uh, creates some problems. But you know, I think it's just new energy, new scheme, and what what's being demanded of them. What about Yarbrough? He seems like a, a guy who can get after the pass. He's kind of an undersized guy. What kind of problem is he? Last week? La no, they're, oh, they're defensive. Oh, yeah, ground. yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he's he's got some wiggle to him. You know, he's, he's got some length and some wiggle. Um, you know, hopefully we can limit the amount of uh, opportunities he has when he can just pin his ears back and come, you know, keeping, keeping the chains in our favor, so to speak. Uh, you know, but we have to be ready. You know, they they run their twist games very well. They 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 run them very explosively. So we're going to have to be on our mark with them.